This is Code.org. I'm currently working on their AP Computer Science Principles course. Let's see what we're doing. Variable Reassignment Part 2. Okay. All of our examples so far have shown how to set a variable, a value of a variable, by using combinations of numbers and other variables. But what if you wanted to do something like add 10 to the current value of a variable? Because updating the value in, variable, in a variable is just moving memory around, the process has to go something like this. Read the current value of a variable and add 10 to it. Store the new value back in the same variable. Yes, the technical term for this is called variable reassignment. When you change the value of a variable based on its current contents, to increase the value of num1 by 10, you actually do this num1 equals num1 plus 10. Yeah. So how the computer is going to read this, and you got to be clear, is the computer says, oh, num1, okay, equals, okay, num1 has a new value. Well, what's that value, the computer says. And it says, okay, num1. All right, so the old value of num1, what was num1 equal to? Uh, looks like, oh, they're not telling us, but maybe it's equal to, oh, yeah, it's equal to 7. So that old value, it grabs the value of 7, and then it's going to go ahead and say plus 10. Okay, well, the old value of 7 plus 10, the new value for num1 would be 17. The diagram to the right shows a picture. Oh, that's what I just went through. All right, common mistake. Mistake 1, to increase the value of a variable by 10, for example, a common mistake is to think that the statement alone will do the trick. Ah, yeah, nope, right? This doesn't do it. You need to put an equals. It doesn't matter. This tells the computer to add... 10 to whatever the value of num1 is, but it's not storing it, right? There's no variable assignment. We don't say, and then make num1 equal that. So this value will be lost. Because you're trying to assign a new value to a variable, it should make sense that the star star the equals sign must be involved somehow. Mistake two, if you were in math class, this statement would make no sense. Remember equal as gets, right? So num1 gets the value of num1 plus 10, right? Saying gets does help sometimes. Make a prediction. We start you out with some code again. Yep. Trace the code and predict what you think will print be printed to the council. No, we're serious about this make a prediction stuff. When you force yourself to make a prediction about what code will do, you will learn faster since it triggers you to apply your mental model of what is happening. Run the program to see if you were right. Add, a, okay, wait, first let's make a prediction. So variable sum number is equal to seven here. Sum number equals sum number plus one. All right, so what does this mean? Sum number get, right, gets the new value of what? Sum number, oh, well, what's sum number equal to right now? Mm, oh yeah, seven. So sum number is going to be equal to whatever sum num used to be equal to. So 7 plus 1. All right, so that would be 8. All right, now down here, sum num. Okay, so another new value for sum num equals sum num plus 1. Well, what's sum num currently equal to? Well, we just made it equal to 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. Up, oh, same thing down here. We just made it equal to 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. All right, and then we're 10 times 10, because sum num just became equal to 10, will be 100. But we never print that. 8, 9, 10, awesome. Okay, add a council log statement. We've left off a little bit of the programming. Add a council log statement at the end of the program to see the last sum num. See if your prediction was correct. Sounds good. Council log. And we'll copy them. Okay, and let's see. But, uh, awesome. Let's keep going.